theoretical basis for hippotherapy. In hippotherapy, a horse is an integral part of a patient's therapy. The horse's walk is used as a movement to which the patient learns to adjust his or her body, resulting in better balance and coordination. Each horse has its own genetically given and trained performance of gait, which becomes a source of individual and characteristic movement impulses. As the horse walks, its body position constantly changes, and physical and sensory stimuli are transmitted to the patient. To explain this, several theoretical constructs support the clinical rationale for the use of equine movement as a treatment tool. These include theories of motor control and learning, as well as sensory processing. Motor control theory, such as dynamic systems theory, and motor learning principles are based on the premise that movement arises from the interaction of multiple processes, including cognition and perception. There is interaction among the individual, the task, and the environment. The control of movement is a result of the coordination of many subsystems, including, for example, the musculoskeletal, central, and peripheral nervous systems, and the cardiovascular system. Motor learning occurs when the task is repeated over and over again to develop competency and proficiency. With equine movement, the repetitive action of the horse's gait pattern reinforces neuromusculoskeletal responses repeatedly. Research has shown that in 45 minutes of being on the horse while it is walking, the participant experiences three to 5,000 movement impulses that require physical responses to maintain postural control. In addition, the variety of movement patterns and positions affords the participant many opportunities to explore and experiment with new movement patterns that may be generalized to functional tasks in everyday life. The dynamic systems theory stresses the importance of understanding the body as a mechanical system. New behaviors are learned through exploration, self-organization, and selection with variables known as control parameters, which regulate and modify behaviors. Equine movement provides a wide variety of variables to challenge and stimulate the individual through velocity, direction changes, stops and starts, and position changes. Another important <laughs> aspect of the horse's movement, which greatly impacts the participant's neuromotor systems, is the provision of symmetry and rhythmicity. Many patients with neurological and musculoskeletal impairments that affect their biomechanical efforts cannot generate movement that is fluid, symmetrical, or rhythmical. The horse's movement provides these qualities repeatedly, allowing the participant to experience, internalize, and respond to these perturbations and ultimately learn to initiate rhythmic movement independently. Sensory processing theories are used to explain the mechanisms by which we receive sensory stimuli from our environment, integrate the stimuli, and make a response. This response can be a motor and or behavioral response. The internal sensory systems that are critical to normal sensory processing are the vestibular, visual, and somatosensory systems. In addition, this treatment environment provides auditory and olfactory stimulation to give information about the surroundings. The movement of the horse provides constant stimulation to the vestibular system. This movement through space allows the visual system to experience normal stimulation along with the vestibular system as the head and trunk are moved during the walk. This facilitates integration of these sensory inputs through the vestibular ocular reflex as the participant is encouraged to maintain visual focus while the head and body orientation changes in space relative to the horse's movement. This movement through space also enhances visual flow, which will facilitate the activation of deep postural muscles. The proprioceptive, kinesthetic, and tactile systems are also critical in the production of functional movements and sense of body and space. Variations in movement 
are perceived through tactile sensations of the buttocks and lower extremities against the body of the horse. Each time the horse steps, it also produces a concussive force that delivers input to the muscles and joints. Depending on the position of the participant, the force may be through the head and spinal column, through upper extremities in a weight-bearing position, or through pelvis and hips. This repetitive compression can provide a regulating effect to modulate muscle tone. For example, individuals with low muscle tone may find that the excitatory input of compression increases tone when the horse velocity is increased. For those with high tone, the repetitive vestibular and somatosensory input when the horse velocity is decreased may have a calming effect. All theoretical models of functional movement and development include the importance of the environment. The equine environment is highly motivating and arousing, encouraging new behaviors. Cognition and executive function can also be challenged. Skills of planning and execution of multi-step directions can be enhanced by using equine movement as a focus and a motivator for clients with neuromusculoskeletal as well as neurobehavioral disabilities, like attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and autism spectrum disorder. These skills can transfer to other everyday activities and occupations after clients learn them in the equine environment. The sense of success and accomplishment increases self-efficacy and self-esteem, which in turn serve to improve functional outcomes. Good job, one more time. Biomechanical influence. Biomechanically, a walking horse imparts motion to the person sitting on its back. Each step the horse takes causes the horse's pelvis to move in a multi-dimensional pattern such as anterior-posterior pelvic tilt, ventral and dorsal rotation around the spine, and lateral flexion of the horse's spine. The horse's pelvic movement is in turn translated to multidimensional movement of the individual. This multidimensional movement of the horse facilitates the contraction of the patient's core muscles of the trunk, as well as pelvic girdle and cervical spine to develop a dynamic postural stability. Proximal stability enables distal mobility. Improved trunk control provides a stable foundation to support upper and lower extremity functional activities. It is also thought that the repetitive rotation of the individual's pelvis around the horse's spine may provide some reflex inhibiting properties that help decrease tone in spastic muscles and facilitates dissociation of the pelvis from the trunk.